welcome to Craft Tea QVC. I'll be your host for the day. I'm Mike the Tea Guy, owner and founder of Craft Tea, herbal tea blends, handmade in Philly. Today was supposed to be the Coffee and Tea Fest in Brooklyn. Uh, obviously that was postponed. What I'm gonna do today is I'm offering festival pricing on my site. Go to my page, you get two herbals for $25, or you can get any of the Farm to Kettle line, uh, any of those teas. All of them are $15. I will be refunding afterwards. You don't need to put in any coupon codes. And if you're local, 20 minutes within Mount Airy, I'll drop it off for free. So today I'm gonna go through each and every one of my blends. I have, I specialize in unique and relaxing herbal blends. So that's everything you see on the bottom shelf. I also have a line called Farm to Kettle. If you're more of a traditional tea fan, black tea, green tea, white tea, then those are probably gonna be more up your alley. Those are really delicious and those come from independent tea farmers around the world. So let's kick it off and go through each tea. I'll start off with the Brain Lifter because it's the only herbal that has caffeine. Everything else on this bottom shelf is gonna be caffeine free. This has Herba Mate, which is the only herb that has caffeine in it. Um, there's three different regions where you can get this caffeinated plant. In North America, it's Yupon. In Central America, it's Guayusa. In Latin America, they call it Herba Mate. You've probably heard of it before. It's kind of used as a social drink um, where they sit around a little circle and out of a thermos, they may uh, keep pouring their bombilla with a straw. They sip it, you get a little buzz off of it. It's a really good body tonic. It's a really good mental tonic. So I use it as the base for the Brain Lifter, um, which I originally created as a driving tea. I was in a long distance relationship and I was traveling for, for my work, which got me into tea. So when I came back from traveling, I would have to travel some more. Uh, I didn't want to go for the five hour energy drinks. I wanted something I considered clean energy. So I created a blend. You got Herba Mate, Lemongrass, Lemon Balm, Spearmint, and then a bunch of brain herbs. So Suma Root and Gotu Cola. Gotu Cola, you'll find in a lot of my blends. It's one of my favorite herbs. Doesn't have too much flavor, which is good, but it gives you really nice benefits, good circulation of oxygen to the brain. So this one has a very clean, refreshing flavor to it. The vinyl pairing, which um, if you're new to Crafty, you may not know, I pair each and every one of my blends with a vinyl record that fits the vibe of each tea. So you may not know what uh, Go-To Cola is or Ashwagandha, but you see that it pairs with Willie Nelson. You kind of get an idea of what that tea is going to make you feel like. So for the driving tea, I used to listen to a lot of kraut rock uh, when I was driving. It's very good, has a steady rhythm, just constant. Uh, there's really good bands like Kraftwerk, uh, Can, which is one of, one of these guys, and then uh, Tangerine Dream. Those are really good uh, driving albums. I ended up going with Can. Uh, Tago Mago is the name of the album. It has this monstrous 18 minute track for side two called Hallelujah, which is uh, just a really great freak out jam. But moving on, we're gonna have Computerized followed up next. That's another nine to five or two. I recommend this for anyone running the corporate life. Uh, Brain Lifter is gonna be better in the morning because it does have that little bit of caffeine. If you want something in the afternoon to kind of help you relax and get through the last two hours of work, Computerized is a great option. Um, you can look on it. So you'll notice a lot of the early blends that I have, and I have my herbals separated into two categories, friendly and funky. The friendly ones, when I first started making blends, uh, I had just gotten done with it. Four years, I was traveling the world, um, and I ended up having health issues at the end of it. So when I left that job to create a tea company, I had health on my mind in the beginning. So a lot of the early blends were me coming up with different health beneficial blends. I'd invite a friend over with that problem and we'd try to solve it with tea. So uh, 
You'll notice uh, Billy French did the artwork for a lot of these earlier ones because the original idea was it was going to be a tea house. Each tea you got, you would get a little baseball card to keep yourself and you would collect them all, win a prize. So Billy originally created these, uh, these little graphics. So you'll notice a lot of them in the beginning are hers. This one looks just like her father-in-law, Bob Baird. But uh, this is a really nice blend. Very popular in this area, Mount Airy, Philadelphia. Uh, it's a very interesting one. You got elderberry, peppermint, lavender, and you get bilberry leaf also. I like this blend because it kind of weaves in and out of subtle flavors, which I would say my specialty is. Nothing's really gonna knock you over with flavor until you get to stuff like black tea, which is gonna be more on the bolder side. Other than that, it's herbs and I don't add any flavorings or sweeteners. So it's gonna be more on the subtle natural side. And the vinyl pairing for that, pardon me, would be the Pentangle. Now these guys invented kind of folk jazz fusion, folk rock in the UK in the 60s. Um, they had really great musicians, Burt Janch, um, John Rinborn, a uh, really great band. This one itself is Sweet Child. You really can't go wrong with a lot of their records. This is a double LP. Half of it is live, half of it is studio. And if you have a headache, computerized is a great headache tea in the afternoon, this will kind of calm you down and let you uh, get on with your day. Whereas another UK band would be The Kinks. And we all know this is some classic stuff. So Arthur is one of my favorite Kinks records. And I pair it with Bummy Tummy, which is actually one of the earliest blends I made. Very simple classic ingredients, ginger, chamomile, lemongrass, lavender. Um, this was made as a digestion aid, but also just an overall health blend. You can have this at any hour of the day and you can have it whatever's ailing you. It's probably gonna make you feel better. Uh, as I mentioned with Computer Eyes, I specialize in kind of these subtle flavored blends. This one is gonna knock you in the nose with ginger. So if you're more of a subtle ginger fan, I would recommend something like Soar Before. If you're a ginger fanatic, I would definitely recommend Bummy Tummy. And then another digestion aid. So Bummy Tummy is gonna be more if you have an upset stomach and you just wanna feel better. Strong Mint was made because I used to get $5 gyros every Wednesday. They would have a deal at my local Greek spot. You go in, you get a gyro, five bucks every Wednesday. If you looked at my credit card statement for a year, you'd see it every Wednesday, same five dollars every week. Uh, after a few weeks, it became too much for me and my stomach. So I needed to develop something to help me <laughs> digest that gyro. Strong mint is that. So that's going to be a bunch of different mints. You got peppermint, spearmint. The sweetness in it comes from the licorice root. Uh, which is really great for digestion. And then you get a lot of leafy stuff. You get raspberry leaf, strawberry leaf, you have lemon verbena, you have orange peel. This is a great tea to have if either you have a sweet tooth. It's one of the sweetest blends I have because of the licorice root. And it would also be good if you have big meals. So like right after Thanksgiving, I'm reaching for this. Christmas time, reaching for this. $5 gyro on Wednesdays, reaching for this. And this is another Billy uh, drawing, as is Deep Sleep 9, which, before I move on, got to show you Strong Mint. Because of the horns, the little Sweet Mint, I think pairs well with the horns of um, Minahan Street Band. Now, they're off of Daptone Records, which uh, I was a big fan of. Um, right after college, got really into Daptone uh, Records. They have a retro soul sound. Uh, this band got semi-famous when Jay-Z started sampling them. They make really good instrumental soul. Uh, they've backed up Charles Bradley was their band. And a lot of the members of Daptone kind of intermingle on each other's records. So Minahan Street Band, you'll find some of those members in Budo's Band or L. Michael's Affair. This one ends with the theme song from Rocky. Um, but other than that, if you like instrumental music, especially if you like soul music, this is a really good one to check out. 
Whereas Deep Sleep 9, we're going to uh, slow things down a bit. So as I mentioned before, this side is going to be all friendly teas. Those are all going to be for health benefits. So you have the two digestion teas, you have the work teas over there. These are my sleepy time teas. I got two of them. Um, and a lot of my funky teas, which we'll get through later, especially if they have kava in them, are going to be really good for sleep. But Deep Sleep 9 and the next one I'll talk about are specifically designed to make you sleep. This is your classic sleep time blend, Valerian Root. A lot of, I shouldn't say a lot of people, some people do not like Valerian Root, whether it is how it smells or how it affects them. Not everyone reacts well to Valerian Root. If you do react well to it, it, it is the sleep herb, so it, it gives you really deep sleep. Um, but because of the potent smell of it, pungent, I like to mask it with a lot of spearmint, chamomile, get a little bit of lemon balm in there, passion flower hops, those help with the sleep as well. Uh, funny thing about this, cool thing about this, is you can actually take a bath with Deep Sleep 9. Um, Egyptians used to take valerian baths for arthritis, and uh, I thought I'd give it a try one time, add a little Epsom salt, gives you a really good body buzz. The vinyl pairing for this is what I used to sleep to back when I had sleep issues. Frippin' Eno, Evening Star. Uh, I couldn't really tell you how this album ends because I typically fall asleep before it ends. But this is tape delay, really good ambient record. Uh, one of the best ambient records you'll find. And as I mentioned before, the Valerian route is not always uh, desired from everyone. So I decided to make a Sleepy Time tea that didn't use it. So this is John's Yon John, uh, which is the Philly Sleep Time Tea. It pairs with John Andrews and the Yon's Bad Posture. So John Andrews uh, is a really talented musician, artist. He does animations as well. Uh, he's on the record label Woodsis, which is one of my favorite uh, record labels. They do retro, folk, psych folk uh, just really good, uh, really good tunes that sound like they're from another era. John is their organ player. He plays in a bunch of other bands. He does live stuff with uh, Hand Habits. He's in Quilts. He's in uh, Cutworms uh, when they tour. But after a Woods show that John opened for, I approached him after the show. He has very mellow, relaxing music. I approached him, and uh, for his merch table, I... I said, I make teas. Would you be interested? And he said, I already have teas. And he pointed to t-shirts. Uh, once I clarified what I was talking about, he was down. And I made this John's Yon John, which does not use Valerian root. Instead, it uses an onslaught of nerve tonics. So I have catnip, passion flower, skull cap. You have hops in there. Your base is going to be similar to Soar Before, which I'll talk about next. But that's going to be cinnamon chamomile, rose hips, uh, you have marshmallow there, and echinacea to kind of represent the woods aspect to John. It's a really nice concept blend, very special tea, one of my favorites. And this month, uh, John hasn't put out an album since Bad Posture. He recorded it, he needs to get it mixed, he's raising funds for it. Everything I sell of John's Yon John for the rest of March, I am giving to John. So if you want to help him out, and if you want to hear the third LP, this is a great opportunity. He has fans all over the world that have already bought, bought it. We've had this deal going on the past two weeks. Sent it to Italy, sent it up north, sent it down south. If you want to grab one, now's a great time. Soar before, we're now going to get into our aches and pain uh, part of the show. Booker T. Jones. So... You may be asking why I have vinyl pairings. Uh, as I mentioned before, I was traveling the world for work. I would come back home, and instead of going out to a bar to catch up with friends, I would want to invite them over for something a little healthier. I'd invite them over for tea and vinyl. Booker T and the MGs were always a classic staple. I have a bunch of their records. It really makes great background, background noise uh, when you're just hanging with friends. 
This isn't an MG's record. This is actually a current one that he did with The Roots as his backing band. And Dennis Coffey, who was part of Motown, he has a lot of famous Motown licks. This is just a, a great, <laughs> great album. I mean, uh, really good songs, really great guest performances. You got Jim James from My Morning Jacket. It ends with Lou Reed. You have Sharon Jones. You have uh, the guy from The National. Uh, and Booker T's B3 organ is just shining great all throughout it. So if you can't find a Booker T in the MG's album, seek this one up. And I paired it with Soar before because it's so hot. So when I think of Memphis, I'm thinking of like a, a hot climate. And Soar before, which as you can see, you got a little giraffe being massaged by monkeys on there. Uh, one of my favorite teas, uh, there's, there's a few teas that have just throughout the, throughout time have just stood really well. This is one that's, that's always consistent. I uh, mentioned before with John's Yon John, cinnamon, chamomile, rose hips, marshmallow. You got a few other things going on. I used to have kava in it. Uh, I recently got rid of kava in that and one other blend and then focused on having kava in, in the other blends, upgraded kava source. Anyways, bumped up the passion flower and skull cap in here, so it still gives you the aches and pain relief, uh, but without using kava. Next up, another ginger one. And before I go to this, I will say, so I mentioned before, bummy tummy smacks you in the nose with ginger. This is gonna be a really nice blend that, like computerized, weaves up and down, whole bunch of different subtle flavors. Uh, really nice. If, if, if you like being smacked in the face with something, pick something out, else out. But if you, if you like the little nuances in life, this is a, a really good blend to uh, try out. Sana Iguana, my most potent tea. Uh, whenever I'm getting sick, I reach for this. It puts a dent in the sickness. This is going to be a ginger blend, but mixed with peppermint. And then you have elderberries, which is great for immunity as well. And then the immunity herbs, echinacea, stragolus. Uh, you got orange peel in there as well. This is the heaviest blend I have. Uh, <laughs> it's the most refill tea I have. Uh, if you didn't know, I do refills on my website, crafttguy.com, where today you can get two herbals for 25, farm to kettle $15 each. If you scroll down, you'll see the Refill Madness uh, link. You can click on that. And every tea I have, uh, with the exception of the Farm to Kettle line, you can find on the Refill page. You keep your 10, I send you a bag of the Refill for 10 bucks. The vinyl pairing for Sana Iguana, which is such a hazy, hot record. Ginger, I think of hot because it's so warming. Gabor Zabo, who was a Hungarian psychedelic jazz guitarist. He was on the LA scene in the 60s. He, um, he passed away too young in life, but what he did put out, much like Booker T and the MGs, any Gabor Zabo record you pick up is incredible background music for just hanging with your friends. This vinyl pairing used to be something else. It used to be a Gabor Zabo live album with Charles Lloyd, who's a flute, flutist. Um, I switched to this one because the other one was a little too hard to find, so I wanted people to be able to pick this one up. And this one uh, has both sides now, the Joni Mitchell song. It's one of my favorite, favorite instrumental covers. And Walk Away Renee uh, by The Left Bank. Sana Iguana, if you're getting sick, reach for that one and then fill it up like everyone else. Another aches and pain tea would be Don't Cramp My Style. And uh, these have all been Billy's artwork up until now. This one was done by the other Mike O'Brien. My name is Mike O'Brien. Used to live with one of my best friends, the other Mike O'Brien in college. Um, this is actually somewhat stolen artwork. Um, most of the blends you'll see, it's it's, art that I sketched out, sent to an artist that I liked, and then they provided their better version of it. 
This, I just liked. I used to manage a funk rock band, The New Retro, which I have a new retro blend that I'll talk about later. But they did a show with Naveed Navi, who was a, uh, a rapper that I'm friends with. Very talented, like an insane lyricist. Very great with freestyles. He had a great show at the Velvet Lounge in, uh, in Washington, D.C. years ago. This was 2010. And... Uh, New Retro was on the bill. This was the poster cover uh, that other O'Brien did. And I just thought it fit the vibe of Don't Cramp My Style, which is, you know, you have a woman stunning a big bear that's trying to cramp her style. This, as the name suggests with Don't Cramp My Style, is great for cramps, great for female health. I actually designed it as a male tonic tea. Um, didn't sell that well, rebranded it as female health and did a lot better. So guys, you can have it too. Uh, women, it's designed for you. It's a very uh, comforting mix. It's one of the more floral ones, so it's on the lighter side. It's again, not a black tea, not a ginger, not gonna smack you in the face. Um, it's gonna be more on the lighter side, but very comforting. The chamomile, the rose hips, you have a tiny bit of hibiscus in there. The loose leaf of it is one of the prettiest ones. It kind of looks like potpourri. And now that I open this, I'm reminded that it has jasmine flowers in it rather than jasmine pearls, which I recently, with the herbals, I mentioned Brain Lifter is the only one that has caffeine of the herbal teas. I had two blends, the new retro one and Don't Cramp My Style, both had jasmine pearls in it as one ingredient. So it had a little bit of caffeine, but they're both very relaxing teas. So to avoid confusion with everyone, I switched the jasmine pearls out. Now they have jasmine flowers. I really like the new versions of these teas. So if you were a fan of it before, try this one. Um, to fit the female health tea, I have a Courtney Barnett vinyl pairing. This is a uh, for the 10th anniversary of uh, Mom and Pop Records. This is a double EP, C of Split Peas. These are um, a couple, I could be wrong, it could be more than two EPs that Courtney Barnett did. She's in Australia, she's Melbourne. Um, if you like Lou Reed, uh, if you like sardonic music and um, just... I, I just like it. It just sounds good. Uh, she's got really good songs. Avant Gardner is incredible track. I would definitely recommend that. I love the artwork, of course, The Wave. Uh, but check her out, if, if you will. I have next up The Decemberist, Peaker-esque. Now, this is actually one of my favorite albums back in college. It's been a while since I've listened to the Decemberists, but this is a really good, uh, really great album. It's a, a double album, uh, really good sound on it, really good production of, of the record. If you're, if like me, you used to listen to this back in the day, this is one of the, the better sounding records I own. And I pair it up with Invasion of the Red Pandas. Wrong one. Invasion of the Red Pandas, artwork by Maria, my friend Maria. I was, I'd never seen a red panda before, but back when I was traveling, I was in uh, Shen, Shenzhen, China. I, uh, they're known for having a lot of amusement parks. Like that's what that city's known for, which I love amusement parks. So I got really excited when I was visiting and one of the amusement parks they had there, they had a little wildlife section and they had red pandas who I'd never seen. And I witnessed this red panda come out of crawling, climb up a little stalk, bamboo stalk, and then just go to town. He was eating for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. I must've taken 300, 400 photos, shared that with Maria who created a really fun collage out of it. A uh, little funny story about that. Uh, <laughs> there was this artwork. Um, I've mentioned this Billy uh, person before and other O'Brien. 
Uh, back in college, I lived in a 13-person house. It was a Victorian home, four floors, and uh, that's where Billy lived and other O'Brien. Maria's future husband lived there, and that's how I met her. But in this home, there was a, a little piece of fox. It looks like this, but a fox, and it was a painting. And I thought it was Billy, so I asked Billy to, like, recreate this red panda thing with that. And she was like, eh, no, that's Maria. So I asked Maria. She did a really good job. I have another one of hers, Psycho Kitty. Uh, but I'm, this is one of the more fun blends. Great uh, family blends. I use a lot of funky herbs, things that are kind of like alcohol alternatives, more adult-like. Um, but some of the blends I have are very popular with kids who just want something fruity. So this is a nice uh, hibiscus, lemongrass, rose hips, peppermint, goji berries, and raspberry leaf to represent the fluffiness of the red panda. Makes a really good iced tea in the summertime. Makes a really good gift in the holiday time because it, it smells like Christmas. It's just a, a very nice fragrant tea and uh, popular amongst kids. The next tea pairs with Willie Nelson. So you should have a pretty good idea how it makes you feel. Red-Headed Stranger, which is a very sparse record that he did, I believe in 72. The back is really neat in that it kind of looks like a, a comic strip. This is a sitting around the campfire record. It's just him and Trigger, his acoustic guitar. Campfire Companion obviously is the, the parent to it. As you can see, it's my friend Jared sitting around a campfire trying to clear his head. And he's getting that because of the sage and the holy basil. But it mixes with cinnamon, so it gives it a smokiness to it, which hence the willy. Uh, if you haven't heard Redheaded Stranger, it's a very peaceful album. Like I said, it's sparse. It's, most of the time, it's just him on acoustic guitar. He's got a really great band when they do play. Um, definitely check this one out or what he would do after this, Shotgun Willy, which is like country funk. And then lastly, with the Friendly Tees, is one that I do not sell online. Gritty Vocals, very popular in Philly. I made this as the Philadelphia Throat Coat Tea. I made it for the green rooms and a bunch of concert venues around Philly. So uh, last year, I got in a, a bunch of different concert venues that I just love going to shows. Uh, and I love artists. I love supporting artists. So in return... I started putting teas in their green rooms. Gritty Vocals uh, is for all those singers out there that are touring, their voice gets run down, they come to Philly and they need to put on a show. Reach for this. So this is, um, it pairs with Sheer Mag, which was one of my favorite albums a couple years back. I actually got into it the year after it was released, but what a killer album. I mean, song after song after song. I cannot believe they're all on one album and it's not a greatest hit. It's just a fantastic album. It gets me so pumped up. I'm not usually like a very heavy uh, listener of most sorts, like punk or metal or anything like this. This kind of floats on all of that. It's not too rough. Um... The singer is great, Tina Holliday. Uh, she's got a really cool voice. And if you just like really nice rocking songs, you gotta check this one out. It obviously pairs with the vibe of Gritty Vocals, which is a very like, welcome to Philly, let's have fun type of tea. So those are all the friendly teas. Those are all gonna be more for people that like herbal tea because it helps with different benefits. I'm not a doctor, but you can have any of these to, you know, help you with anything you need in life. Whereas I also make funky teas, and I think this is my real specialty. These are all teas that are based off of concepts, concepts like graffiti or vinyl records or the new retro, the band I used to manage. Uh, the first one, and... 
since these are friendly and these are funky, you'll notice the flavors on these are very different. If you like unique things, if you like it interesting, different, um, if you're okay with testing things out, all of the, I would recommend any of the funky teas like the Wissahickon Walker, which I am uh, drinking this morning. The story behind the Wissahickon Walker was I was walking the Wissahickon on a Friday. Sun started setting, went over to uh, Acme, the grocery, uh, grocery store, and I turned the corner in the Acme, and who's there other than Kurt Vile just standing in front of the, the frozen meat section. Uh, at the time, I was in a humongous Kurt Vile phase. Uh, he was really helping me get through some things, uh, and I just love his music. Uh, so, you know, color me shocked. And when I, when I saw it, it like electrified me. And the next day I created a Kurt Vile blend and unlike other blends, it was something where got it on the first try. It was just, I was electrified at, at there. But Kurt, if you don't know, is a very mellow, fresh and cool indie rock artist who hails from Philly. Uh, and as such, I use a lot of Kava Kava in the blend. If you've never heard of Kava Kava, Kava is what got me into tea, actually. I got into herbs before I got into the tea leaf. Um, when I was traveling, I used to collect different instruments. Uh, right behind the camera, there's a buzaki, uh, and then there's a bunch of instruments upstairs. But I was collecting all these instruments. I couldn't play them that well. So I was hanging out with friends, we would be jamming, and I wanted something as kind of like a, a natural high or just a muscle relaxer to kill the middleman between my brain and my hand. I just wanted to play fluidly. Someone recommended Kava Kava. I'm glad they did because it worked really well for me. I really like jamming on Kava Kava, which you could pick any of the Kava Kava blends if you're a musician and especially if you like improv stuff, it kind of puts you in a very tribal feeling, uh, primitive. It's very primitive. So with the Kurt Vile blend, it's the most covered out of any of the other blends. So it does, it's the most mellow blend I have by far. Uh, but I mix that with the whole fresh and coolness. You get spearmint and lemongrass to help with that. Catnip, because he's such a cool cat. Uh, raspberry leaf, like Invasion of the Red Pandas, is very fluffy. And if you've ever seen Kurt Vile, he's kind of known for having very fluffy hair that just flows. Uh, there's hops in there as well. You're going to notice a lot of hops in the uh, concept blends, especially with musicians, especially indie musicians. I kind of use it to represent the craft beer that they'd be having that night. I originally made the Wissahickon Walker to make it as a CBD blend. This was a, a couple years back. Uh, tested it. It did help, but it was way too expensive. So as I mentioned today, you can get two herbals for $25. Uh, they're typically around $15. If it was a CBD blend, I'd have to sell it for $50. So I did not go down that route. But I'll tell you what. You can mix it with CBD if you'd like, but the kava in it alone, the catnip, the hops, it's all very relaxing. I don't think you need uh, any more assistance in that regard. So the vinyl pairing, this is a concept blend based off of Kurt Vile. I paired it with Waking on a Pretty Days, which uh, is my favorite cover of his because he uses the Steve Powers... Um, Mural. This is in uh, in Fishtown. Used to live a few blocks away from here. This is still here today. At one point, it was painted over, and it was a big controversy, and they painted it again. Uh, I love this album cover. The title track, almost title track, because it's pretty day on the title track, uh, is just an incredible extended nine-minute indie rock jam. It's got a few ones on there, Gold Tone and Girl girl Called Alex, um, I love. He's got the Violators on the back. Probably not my favorite Kurt record, 
but definitely one to check out and um, pairs well with Wissahick and Walker because of the extended jams and how hazy it is. High Fidelity is a blend based off of a vinyl record. It's supposed to make you feel warm and groovy. I used to have a lot more tees. I used to have 50 tees. Then a few years back, I cut down a lot and I only had a dozen tees and I said, I'm not making any tees ever again. This is the 13th tee I made and it kind of just opened the floodgates. It's a sibling version to Campfire Companion. These are both smoky cinnamons. This has a lot more groove in it because of the cava cava that's in it. Damiana hops as well. It's one of my favorite smelling teas. And if you're into uh, Earl Grey, I don't make Earl Grey because I don't use flavorings, oils, anything of that sort in my teas. Earl Grey, you need the bergamot oil. If you like that though, I typically steer people towards that. It's not a similar taste, but it's a, a similar feeling. It kind of rainy day in London feel to it. The vinyl pairing is Woods. Above mentioned, uh, they run Woodsis, one of my favorite labels. I always love their designs. The music's great. This one has a really cool gatefold. This, I believe, was their eighth album. They've been around quite a long bit, especially for indie rock. I mean, you would have thought they faded by now. But um, this one's interesting because they started getting into Ethiopian jazz sounds, which I love Ethiopian jazz. You'll see Mulatu in a, in a couple teas is one of the other blends. So you have horns in here. You have a very, it's a different feeling because usually they're lo-fi lo-fi sounds uh really great drummer on here and i love the production on on woods but high fidelity was made he maybe wanted i told i told you i stopped at 12. why did i make the 13th i started uh i was doing the dc record fair down at penn social years ago and for the DC Record Fair, I wanted to create a tea based off of vinyl records. So that's, that's where you get high fidelity. Whereas Psycho Kitty was made for the Cat Cafe in South Philly. Kawaii Kitty Cafe. If you've ever been, if you haven't, such a cute spot. You have to go. Uh, they, have, they have really cool ambiance there. Everything's painted well. The cats are the spotlight of it all. They donate all the cats through Paws, which is a uh, animal, not donation. Uh, I'm blanking, but <laughs> my director's telling me. Adoption. Adoption. So Paws is an adoption. They actually, I was in there a few weeks ago and they had run out of cats. So they've somewhat, uh, gotten too big for their britches uh because they keep running out of cats to have at the cafe because it's such a popular popular place if you haven't been please go it's a very fun place so for this one i decided to pair it with talking heads there's also like a somewhat of an 80s feel to it stop making sense such a fun album such a fun movie uh, pairs really well with this this is another one that was done by, uh, by Maria, who did Invasion of the Red Pandas. Another good children's tea. It's one of my most simplest blends. A lot of the herbs, you'll have eight to 10 different ingredients and lots of things weaving in and out. Psycho Kitty is just three ingredients. So you're gonna, you're gonna taste the lemongrass you're going to see the butterfly pea flower, which if you've never seen that before, it typically turns drinks blue. Depending how much you get in your blend, it may be green, it may be blue, but you'll see that. And then you're gonna feel the catnip, which is uh, very relaxing and definitely had to do it for the cat cafe because what else are you gonna do? Surprisingly, even though those are just the three ingredients that are in there and they're all herbs, 
This kind of tastes like Fruit Loops. So I don't know what Fruit Loops is made out of, but it may, <laughs> may be catnip. Another one with butterfly pea flower is going to be Graffiti. This is going to be way more on the funkier side. Like I said, kids would usually like Psycho Kitty. Graffiti is more if you just need relaxation, serenity, if you're an artist and you just want to relax. It used to have Kava. It's one of the ones that I got rid of the Kava. I've been doing a lot of events. I found that there's certain people that want the feel good aspect of kava uh, that you can get somewhat with other herbs and but kava interacts with medication that they may be on so if they're on any antidepressant uh, you would not want to have kava kava so i took kava kava out of this one so they would have an alternative to have and so i just bumped up the passion flower in this you'll notice my friend trumpet wom on the cover the artist of this is a guy named Brian that I met at a punk rock flea market in Trenton. He does um, 3D surrealism. So if you put on 3D glasses, you would see these tea leaves popping out on you. Uh, the concept of the blend is that it's designed after graffiti. So it's a bunch of pretty colors, much like Don't Cramp My Style, which is a very floral blend, very pretty to look at. That one looks like potpourri. This is supposed to look like street art, so a bunch of different colors. It's definitely the most colorful blend I have. Butterfly pea flower, you are gonna have it turn a little bit blue, but it's gonna be really on the herby side. If you like lavender, it's very comforting. Uh, Trumpet Womp has a new album coming out. If you follow on Facebook or Instagram, you probably saw a really cool video that we did with her a few weeks ago at a Graffiti Pier. She's one of the most talented musicians I've heard. Plays the trumpet and the keys at the same time. Has a sultry voice. Check her out. She's, she represents that blend because it's good for joy. And she's just a very joyful person and a really great artist. The vinyl pairing is Mulatu of Ethiopia. Mentioned that with the Woods one. This is the godfather of Ethiopian jazz. As you can see, this album was originally associated with uh, Ethiopian Airlines. Mulatu, uh, much like Booker T and the MGs and Gabor Zabo, when I was inviting friends over for Teen Vinyl in the early days, Mulatu was definitely one artist I would love to play for them. Really great instrumental stuff. Very funky, very slinky, very groovy definitely check it out. He kind of got a um, revamp in the 2000s when Jim Jarmusch used his music in Broken Flowers, that movie with Bill Murray. Uh, so he got a little bit of fame uh, a few years back. The next album, or the next T, uh, another comforting chamomile blend, but with a lot more nerve tonics is Mellow My Mind, which is a name of a Neil Young song, not on On the Beach, but you can see why the art was chosen to be on the beach. Uh, the vinyl pairing is On the Beach, which is one of my favorite Neil Young albums. I'm a humongous Neil Young freak, and uh, there's a lot of really good out, you know, I have a lot of favorites. On the Beach is probably one of my favorites. It's only seven songs. Maybe it's eight songs, but the side two is just three perfect songs. Ambulance Blues, On the Beach, and Motion Pictures. Uh, this is an album that he did on Honey Slides, which is very cheap weed that he would bake in honey, and then he would eat, and he said it it was very heavy. It was very heavy. So you can hear it on the album how like sedated all the band members are. Uh, Levon Helm is on this, Rick Danko, Graham Nash, David Crosby, Ben Keith. It's one of the finer. It's not a Crazy Horse album. And I love Crazy Horse, but really good musicians on here. And it pairs with Mellow My Mind, which is originally created as the new retro tea. 
So I used to manage a bluesy funk rock band called The New Retro. Uh, many years ago, they had a very heavy sound, uh, very powerful as well. So this tea is very relaxing. It has all those nerve tonics that make you feel gro groovy and funky, but it also has Damiana, which is powerful. It's a great male tonic. This one, like Don't Cramp My Style, had jasmine pearls in it. Now it is caffeine free. It's one of my favorite current blends right now. A decent amount of kava kava in there, so it's very groovy. Uh, check out the new retro, if you may. They were the first people, and it'd been years since I had worked with them, but they were the first people to ask me to create a tea for an event. So a lot of the teas you see here in the beginning were created when I was doing art galleries or concert shows where I was tabling tea. That's one of my earliest blends because that was the first event I did. I had that new retro funky tea. Another show I did early on was a Baltimore art show. And this is uh, based off my friend's art gallery in Baltimore, which is very worldly and eclectic exotic if he may the willie nelson pairing gives you a really good of idea what to expect so does the ravi shankar uh you should get an idea that this is going to have some sitar sounds and the tea is going to make you feel very worldly uh this is an album that ravi did with the london symphony orchestra he does a lot of east meets west type albums they're all pretty good this pairs with Class Cat, which is one of the more unique teas I have because of the schizandra berry in there. Schizandra berry is kind of used as soul medicine in China and Korea. Uh, it kind of tastes like a pickle, which I like to tell people after they've tried it. But I mix it with schizandra, holy basil. Those two alone are what I was going for with the um, with the art gallery. But then the base itself is kind of my take on Turkish tea. So you get orange peel in there, hibiscus, lemon verbena. Um, one of my favorite teas throughout the years, the art is done by my girlfriend, Little Diddy. Uh, and this is actually, much like I mentioned before with Don't Cramp My Style, lifted art. So she did not make this for the tea. This is a, a nice little pastel that she did of her cat, Henry Pepperoni, who is a class cat. Or as I forgot to mention, she did High Fidelity, which is an original of hers. And I did forget to mention, Brad Mall did this. He's a local Mount Airy guy, and it's got uh, the red covered bridge on the Wissahickon on there. But this is a great blend, makes a really refreshing cold brew. If you like different, go with this. If you like sour beer and want to get into tea, this is a great one to do. As I mentioned before, I kind of have sibling versions. Cosmic Trip is the intense version of Class Cat. It's another one that has schizandra berry. It's got holy basil. It's got the lemon verbena. But it has a bunch of feel-good nerve tonic, very heady herbs. Uh, this was made for Sky Space, which is one of my favorite places in Philly. Uh, it's a James Terrell uh, art installation. He does a series called Sky Space. You go at sunset, there's a hole in the ceiling, and depending what color the hole is, sorry, depending what color the room is at the time, the hole will look bigger or smaller, It'll look pitch black, and then it'll look like it's 2 p.m. Uh, it's a nice thing of uh, uh, color theory. Um, give me one second. So I created this one back when Sky Space was um, doing shows. They had concerts there every season. They called it Sonic Seasonals. They had Mary Latmore, who's a harpist. Uh, Laraji. The Laraji shows were fantastic. And the first one I did was a Steve Gunn one. 
So Steve Gunn uh, was Philly born. Now he's in Brooklyn, but he's a Philly artist who um, is a finger picker and has meditative sounds. He's very hypnotic, which this blend is based off of Steve Gunn playing at Sky's Face. So because of the color aspect to Sky's Face, there is butterfly pea flower in here, but a lot of it is references to Steve Gunn's music, which is very heady. And um, so very meditative stuff on here. And it has the schizandra berries, but with a bunch of things that make you feel good. I would say Cosmic Trip. And by the way, Cosmic Trip is another lifted artwork piece. Uh, this is actually done by my acupuncturist, uh, Metis Man. You can look him up on Instagram. Highly recommend him if you want reasonable acupuncture in Philadelphia, especially Mount Airy or Germantown or Chestnut Hill. I would say Cosmic Trip and the one we're doing right now are, I try to find a middle ground between flavor and effect. Those, these teas go more for effect. So if you can't handle an intense uh, flavor, I would steer, steer away from Friend of the Devil, which is my Grateful Dead tea. Friend of the Devil is a blend of mine. Uh, this was made for Ardmore Music Hall. They have Funky Brunch. Uh, which is a monthly series they do where it's kind of like punk rock flea market. You go, a lot of hip vendors, there's music playing, like a band playing on stage uh, throughout the whole time. They have brunch, they have drinks, family-friendly event. There's always a theme. One, one month it was a Grateful Dead theme. There's a lot of Dead shows there, uh, Dead tribute shows. So for that, I created a blend based off of the Grateful Dead. It is the hippie, dippy uncle version of Red Pandas. So it's a fruity tea, but mixed with earthiness like sage, damiana, holy basil. This is kind of like a, a barefoot walk in the woods uh, drinking a fruity tea. Vinyl pairing is Blues for Allah. I actually got this before I was a deadhead. I got this in college, and I don't know if I got any other Grateful Dead albums at the time. I always thought it was pretty good, and um, looking back at it, now that I am a fan, uh, I'm still going to, it's such a groovy, jammy album, so it fits the vibe of this tea. Whereas Congo Bongo has the vinyl pairing of Fela Kuti and Ginger Baker, so that's that one's going to be groovy as well. This is made for the Philadelphia Drum and Percussion Shop in Fishtown. It's actually the first place in Philly that I got into, and I decided to make a tea for them. Artwork is done by Little Diddy, my girlfriend. Uh, she's a drummer, and we're really big into Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong. So the concept of this is a, a tea that Diddy Kong would drink in order to drum. Uh, pairing on it is Fela Kuti and Ginger Baker, who's the famous drummer of Cream, one of the greatest drummers of all time. Fela, all his music is pretty consistent, really good. Um, Afro-funk, if you've never heard it before, definitely check him out. Probably not the best thing he's ever done, but I thought it was appropriate because of Ginger Baker. And uh, the blend itself, we got Roy Boss in there. So some people will ask me if I have any rooibos blends. I do, but this is more of a funky rooibos, so probably not what you're considering. Uh, it is a kava blend, but with rooibos, spearmint, uh, lemongrass, cacao nibs. Kind of tastes like a smooth, a smooth swing through the jungle, if you may. And the last tea that I'll talk about for the funky ones is going to be Brutang Forever, which um, you should have a pretty decent idea of, of what that's about, but that's a concept blend based off of Wu-Tang. I used to be a humongous Wu-Tang fan back in the day when I was in high school. I got uh, I had Wu-Wear Wallabies back then. I'm wearing my Wallabies today, not the Wu-Wear ones. But uh, that one was made for... Uh, Hole in the Sky, which was a DC gallery uh, run by the other Mike O'Brien who did the artwork for this blend. 
and they were running a 90s art show and I made three blends for it. I did a Seinfeld blend, which was a, a tea about nothing, a Pulp Fiction tea, and then a Wu-Tang blend, which obviously came out the best. It's nine different ingredients, one for each clan member. You got Riza, who's the sage of the group. ODB is hops, because he's the drunk monk. Jizz is the genius, so go to cola, etc., etc. Makes you feel like Wu-Tang. So like, if you don't know Wu-Tang, it's nine different members. They all have their own style, but they'll rap on the same track. So if you're talking Kung Fu, that's nine different sword styles. So that tea is nine different sword styles of herbs. So it's helping nine different areas of your body. And as such, it just makes you feel good and gritty. Uh, that's another smoky cinnamon blend. You got cinnamon and uh, the sage, which makes it smoky. Vinyl pairing is not Wu-Tang, but it is Wu-Tang related. This is Grave Diggers, Six Feet Deep. This is one of my favorite hip hop albums. I think it's one of the most underappreciated hip hop albums of all time. RZA is in it. Uh, these are all Alter Egos. Uh, Fru Kwan was in it and uh, Too Poetic and Prince Paul who did the De La Soul albums. They all, created horrorcore uh, alter egos. So it's a little more on the grim side, but the beats are so fresh and jazzy. It came out in 94. If you just love jazzy hip hop sounds, this is one to get. It's actually a, it says right here, made in Australia. This record is not official, but it has some of the best sound of, of hip-hop albums I've heard. So if you can get the the bootleg version of Six Feet Deep, I recommend it. So those are all herbals. Uh, we've gone over the funky, we've gone over the friendly. As a reminder, Brain Lifter is the only one that has caffeine. In general, they're all unique and relaxing, so they're gonna be more on the afternoon and evening side of things. You can go to Craft Tea Guy this entire weekend get two herbals for $25, or you could get one of the farm to kennel, which is what I'll describe now. Uh, those are all gonna be $15, and I will refund everything afterwards, so don't worry about any coupon codes. But I've been specializing in these unique relaxing herbs for a few years. But after a while, I got sick of people being like, do you have any tea? Do you have any uh, tea leaf? Do you have green tea, black tea, you know, white tea, all this stuff. So I decided to make tea leaf blends. These are gonna be stripped down versions of what you see with the herbals because I do like the flavor profiles I've created. I just wanted something that emphasized the tea leaf. So it still has these blends, but the main emphasis is the tea leaf. And I was fortunate enough to link up with T-Let, who's kind of like an online farmer's market for independent tea farmers all around the world. They, um, you know exactly where this is coming from. You can taste that land. Um, for instance, the first one I'll discuss is one that, like Gritty Vocals, I do not sell online, Tea Fanatic. It was made for tea festivals around, not around the world. It was made for tea fanatics that would meet at tea festivals that just want a delicious black tea. This is a Darjeeling second flush. It was harvested underneath the blood moon from two summers ago. Uh, these farmers in India went out underneath a full moon and picked the tea leaf I don't think I need to say it, but it is a very limited tea because of that. Uh, for the artwork, I got Paul Carpenter, who's kind of a Philly famous artist, to provide. It's the Philly fanatic going berserko in a tea room. If you're going strictly for flavor, I would stick with the farm to kettle. If you want effects, you can go with any of the friendly teas. And if you want something just funky and different, any of the funky teas. But if you're going for flavor, 
Farm to Kettle are all very delicious, especially Tea Fanatic. Vinyl Pairing is a very Philly release. This is a Philly soul record off of Philly International Records back in the 70s. MFSB, Mother, Father, Sister, Brother. Love is the Message. If you've seen uh, Soul Train, they did the theme song. This is a really good, I believe it's all instrumental, but it's got that classic Philly soul sound. The next one we'll do is a black tea as well. This is gonna be a Kanoko Assam second flush. Uh, pairs with Bell and Sebastian because why wouldn't Bell and Sebastian have a vinyl pairing for tea? Uh, Dear Catastrophe Waitress. I love the sound on this. This is an album that I really liked in college. Um, it fits the vibe of this very well because as you can see, that is, it's called Waltz Wild Ride and he is heading downhill. This was done by friend Sarah Jacoby. She, um, She's been doing really good stuff. Her career the past few years has really taken off. She's got a bunch of children's books that she's been doing. Really great Instagram page to follow. Very cute. Much like we had the Tuxie on Class Cat, I wanted fair representation of a Tuxie dog. So like Alyssa did Henry Pepperoni, I made sure Sarah would do Walt. Probably one of the funniest comments I've gotten doing an event is someone walking by the table, seeing this, looking up at me and being like, are you Walt? So that's a Kanoka Assam second flush. Uh, with black teas, some people like to get a little fruity with it. So I added elderberry, rose hip, orange peel, goji berries. And I didn't go overboard on it. Again, the main emphasis is on the tea leaf. Uh, but if you like little fruity notes, it's it's a really good black tea. If you want something very different but caffeinated, baked at the lake. So this is another Sarah artist. This is Sarah Bean. She's a South Philly artist. Again, lifted art. This is something that I saw at her gallery show uh, one day, and I really liked it. And I think it just fits... It looks like a tea cover uh, label. So I asked her if I could use it. Um, the pairing with Baked at the Lake. So Baked at the Lake is very unique because if you've ever had Lapsang Souchong, that's a uh, smoked tea. So they used to take tea from China to Russia and they had pine wood in front of the tea leaf. And by the time it got to Russia, it had kind of smoked and scented the tea. So when it got out, they kind of thought that's what it was. That was the start of Lapsang Souchong. This does not have Lapsang Souchong, but it has um, this one plantation's version of, they do their version of other famous teas. So that's their version of Lapsang. It's a lot less harsh than Lapsang. And the fact that I'm mixing it with cinnamon and ginger really takes out the harshness. Because it has such a, you know, if you were to smell it, pow, reaction. Velvet Underground Loaded. So I'm reading a Lou Reed book right now and I'm really into the Velvet Underground and Lou at the moment. I would love if the vinyl pairing was Velvet Underground self-title because that, that one means a lot more to me. But the aspect of Loaded is that it's loaded with hits. And this tea, like you just drink it and pow, you're just... It fits it really well. Lots of really good songs on here. Who Loves the Sun, Sweet Jane, Rock and Roll. Oh Sweet Nothing. This is the last Velvet Underground with the somewhat original lineup. The next pairing would be JJ Kale, Troubadour. One reason I wanted to create the Farm to Kettle line is I'm greedy. I just wanted more vinyl pairings. I wanted artists like J.J. Kale to have a uh, pairing. So for him, they call him the Breeze. So I got Breezy Baby, which has a little um, baby raccoon on a boogie board uh, surfing. J.J., kind of like that Willie Nelson album I had. This is a, a really nice audiophile edition. Tremendous sound. 
He's got fantastic music. Um, I wouldn't say one album is above another, but this one has Traveling Light, Ride Me High, Cocaine, Let Me Do It To You. It's got, it's got a few really good songs. Sound on this is incredible. If you like country funk and just whisper jams, JJ's really good. That green tea on here to pair him up. So he has a very fresh sound. Um, this one is Kukicha, which is uh, on a female-run tea farm in Japan. If you've ever had Sencha before, Kukicha is somewhat similar in that they're both rich, grassy green teas. Kukicha comes from stems. They're... Um, they have less caffeine because of that, and it just has a really sea-like quality to it. It's the most expensive tea I have, <laughs> so if you want to taste what a very expensive tea would look like, today's a great time because you could get this for $15. And it's almost culinary, like a good green tea. I'm not a humongous green tea fan, but a really good green tea is almost culinary-like, and you can almost want to eat it, and that kukicha is like that. Makes a really nice cold brew. Whereas Moroccan tea is my take on Moroccan mint, which, yes, is a green tea, but you're pairing it with mint. Um, this, typically you would do gunpowder green tea, which is really low-grade green tea, I did, from the same farm that did the Lapsang Sushong, Sushong in Malawi, they have their version of a Chinese roasted green tea. I paired that up with spearmint. A little bit of licorice, because if you go to Morocco, they serve Moroccan mint all day long. All day long. And they'll have two different teapots. One will have a tassel. The one with the tassel means that there's sugar in there. And Moroccan mint with sugar, even though I'm not a big... Sugar in my tea guy tastes really good. So I would recommend that. This artist is a local guy. I did an art show and where I was serving tea. And in front of me, there was this guy who had his artwork on the floor. And I thought it was so bizarre, but I really liked his style. It was um, very psychedelic heavy metal, like very, um, hmm, very vibrant. And months later, I had this tea coming out, and I wanted to use him for the artwork. So I asked the organizer of that art gallery, I was like, hey, who was that guy who had his, his stuff on the floor? What's his name? They didn't know because that guy wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> he had just come into the art gallery and put his stuff on the floor. And once I heard that, I, I knew that I needed to use him. He, he's fantastic. Check him out. He's a self-proclaimed uh, rainbow child. If you go to the artist page on crafttyguy.com, you will find all the little artwork. You can click the link. It'll take them to their Instagram. He's got some cool stuff on his. Final pairing is Grant Green. Great for green tea. Like Booker T, like Gabor Zabo, Grant Green is a great person to have on vinyl uh, when inviting friends over. Very, very cool stuff to have in the background. Green is Beautiful by no means is one of his essential records. I would go for Idle Moments or Nigeria if you want something like that. This fits the vibe more. It's more fun. Um, Ain't It Funky Now and A Day in the Life are side one. So just two tracks. Really good stuff. Definitely check out Grant Green if you can. And so, gone through the blacks, gone through the greens. Now we have a white and an oolong. The white tea is the Ghost Rider. All of the Farm to Kettle features local Philly artists, with the exception of the Ghost Rider, is a throwback to Billy French. You may have missed her. Um, it had been a while since I had worked with her on one of these, and I just absolutely adore the one she made for the Ghost Rider, which is... My best smeller. It's one of the best smelling teas I have. Uh, it's white tea mixed with jasmine pearls and lavender. This is a tea that I made for writers and readers. At these tea festivals, I was finding there were certain demographics uh, that were coming out and a lot of writers and readers. Sure enough, at the debut, it sold out. Um, I used to work at a tea house and this woman would come in, she'd get a pot of white tea, which 
no one ever would get just white tea. They would get more of like the flavored, like mango black tea or peach green tea. This woman would get white tea with a pot, sit in the corner with a book, hours. Wouldn't even bother her. Uh, and I really dug that and it got me into white tea because then I would try it. And again, it's not a black tea. It's not going to smack you over the face, but it's a nice, subtle, just makes you feel really good. It's light. It's more on the subtle side. But this one is called White Prakash White Tea. It comes from Nepal Tea. They're out of Jersey City. Um, but White Prakash is named after this guy's grandfather who started this estate in Nepal, uh, in the Himalayas. They're the first organic tea in Nepal. Very delicious. Um, smells great. Great gift to give a writer or a reader. Similar to Breezy Baby, these two are the most expensive ones I have. So typically I sell them online for $18. Today you can get it for $15. The pairing is Amy Mann, uh, Mental Illness. I've talked about Sheer Mag and I've talked about Woods. Both of those albums were so good that the next year I wanted to create a vinyl pairing based off of it. Amy Man is another one like that. This album got me through some tough times. She just has a really angelic like voice. Really great songs on here. She was channeling the 70s AM vibe. So it kind of just sounds like a depressing John Denver album. Um, she's a fantastic songwriter. And I just love the songs on here. Amy Man, nice. And the last tea that I will talk about today is Heavy Thinker. The vinyl pairing for that is David Axelrod's uh, songs of, her Song of Innocence. Like Booker T, like Gabor Zabo, like Grant Green, the last essential artist to have on vinyl when inviting friends over for tea and vinyl would be David Axelrod. He is a fantastic, uh, psychedelic cinematic uh, soul instrumental producer from the 70s he had uh this one it's inspired by the writings of william blake uh great cinematic instrumental music i created a t just for it uh heavy thinker which is a nice oolong i'm a really big fan of oolongs if you like pure natural teas this is a great one. This comes from a place in Taiwan. It's a female-run tea farm called Forever Spring. They call it that because most tea leaf you get two to three times a year. Forever Spring, guess what? Year-round, it's forever flourishing. The smell kind of smells like banana bread for whatever reason. Uh, if you like chais, this is actually somewhat similar. People ask me if I have any chais. I don't. I make this all by hand. Uh, package it all by hand. I used to have some teas where there would be a second step, breaking out the mortar and pestle and, you know, breaking down ingredients. Since it's all handmade, I got rid of that and I got rid of bagging. So it's all loose, trying to make it as easy as possible. Um, but if you like chives, this is somewhat up that alley in that it has nice little nuanced spice flavors to it. Uh, artwork was done by my former roommate who helps me out when I was releasing this farm to kettle line. And um, just a delicious one. You could do a cold brew from that oolong. And um, it's a very good meditative tea. So like if you like brain teas, I typically recommend herbally. Brain lifter, again, the only one with caffeine. Um, Campfire Companion, another one good for clearing your head. And if you want something with a decent amount of caffeine, Heavy Thinker is a great mental tea. It's got the go-to cola. It's got the holy basil, the oolong as well. But other than that, I think I've run out of things to say. Again, I'm Mike the Tea Guy. I run uh, Craft Tea in Philly. I'm up in Mount Airy. I make all this stuff by hand. Uh, I love it. I love getting local artists and my friends to help me out with the artwork. People seem to be digging it. Was supposed to be at the Tea Fest in Brooklyn this weekend. That's not happening, so I'm doing festival pricing. Go to crafttyguy.com today uh, or tomorrow. 
You can get two herbals, so that's anything down here, for $25. The only one that doesn't have caffeine is the Brain Lifter, or does have caffeine. Top shelf is Farm to Kettle. Typically run over $15 today. They're all $15. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you. You can email me at MikeTheTeaGuy at gmail.com. Other than that, I, uh, I'm out of here. Peace.